Dr. Barnes, great having you here. Let me get right to a question because a lot of people are saying today, hey, Jesus was a socialist. <laughs> no, Jesus wasn't a socialist. <laughs> we can put that to bed. Uh, of course, he wasn't a capitalist either, if we want to be fair. Capitalism is a, a relatively recent phenomenon in the history of economics, and I unpack that in the book. So is there a biblical basis for capitalism without trying to sort of twist the scriptures into an economic system? No, I, I wouldn't say that there's a biblical basis for it, but there is a requirement for morality in order for capitalism to work properly. And the problem we have today is we have what I call postmodern capitalism, which is very different than the capitalism of previous generations. Capitalism built great things in this country. It built schools and hospitals and churches and libraries and uh, great works of art where people invested the money that they made in things that were not about them but about their communities. But there seems to be a capitalism today which says, it's all mine, I can do whatever I want. Unfortunately, in recent generations, uh, this ethical egoism that suggests the only moral responsibility of a business person is to make as much money as possible uh, is really not uh, an effective ethic when it comes to how we want our economic system to work. So greed is the problem and a general lack of morality is the problem. And I think the essence of your book, Redeeming Capitalism, is no, real capitalism has to have some type of moral framework. For most of history, capitalism was a moral science. When you go back to the beginnings of capitalism, I have a whole chapter on Adam Smith. Everyone talks about um, Wealth of Nations as Adam Smith's great work. In fact, a book called Moral Sentiments was written 20 years before, and everything he says about capitalism in Wealth of Nations is built upon the moral presumptions that he lays out in Moral Sentiments. In 2008, we had this huge financial collapse. Mm -hmm. Real estate market collapsed, the banks were all scared. What caused that? One was derivatives, the other was... And, and explain derivatives, because okay. I mean, that's easy for you to say, but what, what does that mean? <laughs> well, derivatives are a financial instrument that uh, are built on, especially in the case of the debt derivatives that were popular at the time, that are built on the projected cash flow uh, of people who promised to pay loans. And unfortunately, people were given loans who had no right to have those loans. Uh, they were called ninja mortgages. No income, no job, no assets. And we were still giving people mortgages. It's no wonder that they defaulted. But the problem is, the reason why people were giving them mortgages was because the lender or the person making the decision wouldn't keep that debt on their own books. They would put it together with other mortgages and sell it off as a separate financial instrument. So they pass the risk on to other people. And if you pass risk on to other people, you've made a moral decision to do that and the whole thing came crashing down. So it was a moral issue. There were, there were immoral people who created a system that they knew, deep down, they knew could not work and was going to collapse, but they were making their money and that's all they cared about. Absolutely. In fact, I tell my students that Every economic decision we all make, and it doesn't matter if it's the decision to buy a new pair of shoes or close a factory and build it offshore, or large and small, every economic decision we make is a moral choice. So therefore, we have to know what the underlying moral principles are that are driving that system. It's a fascinating insight into our economic system. I mean, you, you specifically talk about capitalism. Redeeming it means that you're trying to salvage it, make it so that it works. But I think the powerful message in this book is that it can't work unless we are moral people who not only look at our own circumstances, but we look at those around us, our neighbors, our communities, and we also care about what's happening to them. Dr. Barnes, thank you. What a great message and how timely it is when so many people think that the answer is just taking it all away from people who work and passing it around and that that's supposed to be some utopia. If you're interested in that uh, argument, please uh, buy the book because right now Greg Jarrett's book is number one on the bestseller list and I'm not even number one on my own kid's <laughs> bestseller list. So. Well, you'll be right at the top of the list after being on our show because <laughs> I'm going to tell our folks right now that you can find Dr. Ken Barnes' important work, Redeeming Capitalism, at Amazon and his website, redeemingcapitalism.org.